Brunite Island Power Station was having an explosion yesterday at 8 p.m. Explosions occurred at the transformer. Those things I talked to you a lot about, those big high-powered transformers, this thing exploded. Multiple explosions were reported. It had fire and lots of big black smoke going up in the air. Now, my friends, this is the kind of thing I warn you about as being a real possible issue because the uh, Federal Regulatory Federal Regulatory Commission, uh, FERC, came out in 2014 and said that nine critical power stations, if they went out, could take down our entire grid nationwide for 18 months. Yes, this came out from the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission and to early in 2014. So uh, losing one of these, just one, isn't such an issue because we have 55,000 across America. But what happened here? It's highly suspicious the way this thing just exploded. That's not the usual failure mode for these, although some have burned and caused similar things in the past. But, you know, this could be natural or it might be otherwise, because I've been warning a lot about sleeper cells, and we know there have been some attacks on substations. In fact, quite a few in uh, the last year or two. And in 2013, in fact, uh, on uh, April the 16th of 2013, somebody did a special run on the Metcalf station near San Jose that looked like a, a uh, special forces uh, operation. SEAL team members looked at it and said, this looked like a special forces dry run exercise. What happened there? The way it was all professionally done and zipped up. And we to this day do not who, know who did that. But because that very same day, the North Korean satellite first flew over Washington, D.C. And at the same time, they had a, uh, a, a cargo ship running around in the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean with fully erect missile launchers in it uh, and ISO ship containers, which they later buried underneath sugar to try to get it, sneak it through the Panama Canal. It makes you think, who all has sleeper cells in America that could attack us? We got to suspect North Korea. And for the reports I've been giving you lately, we got to suspect China. And Iran has told us they do. And in fact, this report was relayed to the head of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard and his response, eh, nine, I got already got 20 targeted. And he said that back in 2014. So what they got targeting now? How much more have they targeted? Who all is targeting these substations? And it's not like just certain nine. I'm sure there's probably nine that's most critical or something or some number, but it's probably nine of any certain set of them, probably not just any and every one, but there's probably a good number that could uh, cause this to happen if it occurred in various and sundry locations. Now, what could cause naturally an event like this to happen? Of course, lightning could do it. Uh, some extreme weather event, uh, especially if it led to increased power demand. But this was at 8 p.m. So, you know, the, we're past the peak load of the day in terms of heat. So that sounds strange. Fallen trees can damage power lines, maybe short things out. Electrical failures, uh, such as poor insulation, elect, uh, static electrification, uh, over voltages, uh, Partial discharges and power surges might do that. But at that time, a power surge sounds uh, unusual unless it was caused by something like a tree falling across a major power line. Uh, mechanical failures caused by uh, 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 conductor telescoping, conductor tripping, or uh, hoop buckling might cause it to happen. Uh, you could have high winds, uh, like lightning storms, which could affect the transformer's cooling fan, make it fail, leading to overheating or some other failure. It could be a mechanical problem there, too and cause uh, power surges that overwhelm the uh, transformer fuse protection system leading to an electrical overload. Uh, these are things that could happen, but see what's really strange here is that it explodes. Now, usually what you've got is these windings on the coils of the transformer, the really big ones, are in oil. They're in, totally in an oil bath and that oil cools them and there's like pumps that run to cooling fans. And some of them are just you know static cooling fans and some of them are, are cooling fins. And some of them have fans on them, just depending on what kind of heat load they've got running. Uh, so there's various and sundry designs for that stuff. But to cause an explosion, you would think, uh, one, you'd have to have oil present. So, you know, if you were to drain, if all the oil were to drain out of the transformer, then it would be susceptible to having sparks occur between the coils and uh, initiating a fire. Plus, it could overheat not having the cooling oil. Now, if it, the way it exploded and burned suggested it had oil in it. So it might be that oil had drained down some enough for the upper coils to spark and then catch the fuel on fire. Well, not fuel, it's oil. Oil is really not, you know, usually you can throw a torch on oil and it usually won't explode. 
it takes something pretty major to get oil to explode. Oh, yeah, well, it is explosive, but it takes something major to set it off. It's not like gasoline. It's not as volatile as gasoline. Now, your transformer uh, oil is probably more volatile than spent motor oil, okay? <laughs> but it's, uh, it's something that, you know, it merits an investigation as to why this failed. And I haven't heard any reports on that. We probably won't. That will probably be swept under the rug like so many other things. My friend, uh, Command Sergeant Major Mike Maybe, has been using Freedom of Information Act to extract from the grid uh, utilities uh, power failures and attacks and a lot of this stuff they've tried to hide. If you go to his website, and I've shown it before, I've interviewed him several times. He's gone through that many times and what's really occurring. A lot of stuff. Hey, he was on 60 Minutes and he's been on this channel many times. So, uh, we're going to talk about this. I'm going to go share some of these articles, but it's just not the normal thing that would happen that you would get an explosion like in a multiple explosions. It wasn't said to be an explosion, multiple explosions. Why would a, once it explodes, why would it explode again? Was it the other transformers also exploding? If you had multiple transformers exploding, that would really uh, pique my interest as to what the real cause was. Now, it could be you just had a massive overload across the whole system. Okay, massive short across the whole system. All possible. But if they were low on oil, that's highly suspect. Highly suspect. Now, it could happen, but it's highly suspicious. So you've got to wonder, was it natural? Maybe. Could it have been man cost? That could have been too. It could have been somebody was on the inside to, to, to attempt to see if they could sabotage it. Or some other saboteur might have got in there. Look, these felties are just protected by nothing but a chain link fence. And uh, i got to tell you, <clears throat> it could have been a dry run for uh, an exercise or just say, hey, if we, what can we do to this plan? If we can do this, maybe we can do it many others. It might've been a training exercise, who knows? Like I said, there are several nations that may have sleeper cells in this country that would wanna take out our substations. We know for a fact that Iran has admitted it. Yes, Iran has admitted it. We are highly suspicious of all the military aged uh, Chinese have been flooding in this country. And some of which we have indications that they are actually members of the special forces that uh, might do it. Now, guys, I'm not trying to, don't go out and just, you know, uh, go negative on, on people of any background for this reason, because most people in this country, from any other country, are, are good people. It just takes a few bad eggs to cause major problems. It don't take major giant teams to take down our grid, just a few highly trained teams. I mean, like three or four, you know, they it could hit the power stations. And there's ways it probably could be done with one team. I'm not going to go into that, but I can imagine how even, a two-man team might do it. So guys, we have a lot to be concerned about when we have people that aren't too happy with this country right now, be it North Korea, be it uh, China, be it uh, Russia, be it Iran, or even Venezuela. Oh yeah, they've been sending a lot of people up here too. Maybe they've trained people on this. I mean, they got power substations down. They're not a bunch of nitwits. They, they know how to do things. They got a lot of brilliant people in all these countries. There's also a lot of good people from every land. I've always told you there's there's good people from every race, color, creed, from every uh, city, shire, hamlet, and every nation on earth. So that's why you can't just paint a broad brush. But you got to be, we need to screen people coming to this country. I've said it so many times. We need to know who's coming in. And and then we can and also you know, be able to screen what's coming in. It's keeping stuff just from running across the border. Would give us more ability to also stop the fentanyl trade. Oh, yeah, Biden administration just, just suddenly started negotiating with China. Well, we'll let down some of our sanctions if you'll stop fentanyl. Biden could stop the fentanyl. Just stop the border. Okay, that's all it takes. That would accomplish a lot of other things, like maybe stopping people infected with TB from coming in this country and God knows what else. All right, guys, I'm going to do some share screen activity here. Uh, so first and foremost, what can you do? Prep, get ready. Uh, you know, if the grid goes down and, and we got a lot of people starving, you'll wish you were growing your own food. So go to True Leaf Market. You can still plant a uh, fall garden right now. It's a great time to plant a fall garden. Get your seeds, get started. That winter squash will last you like uh, all year long. It can store for a long time if you get this, uh, Things like butternut squash and you know, Tree Leaf Market or Eden Brothers. Each one have big selections. You get heirloom seeds, non-GM seeds from both of them, and the links will be below. All right, guys, let's look at what's happening. <clears throat> Here's a picture of this power station on fire. Lots of black smoke going in the air. This is on Brunot Island in the Ohio River, right close to Pittsburgh. So, again, this is 8 p.m. <clears throat> yesterday. 
and the crews were called there to fight that fire, according to this article. And they say it wasn't a reactor. It was not a reactor. This is a fossil fuel plant. This is a reporter. Reporters get the facts wrong all too many times. I'll tell you, it catastrophically failed. That I agree with, but it was not a reactor. So uh, you got to watch, you know, that's why you got an engineer like me bringing this report to you. I can tell you the, the truth, the skinny of it. It was not a reactor. There's no reactor on that island. It's a fossil fuel plant. So, uh, you know, fortunately, no reported injuries. Giant flames, thick smoke. You now, the flash was quick, like lightning. And this, but it was too bright to be lightning. Yeah, that's what happens when a transformer blows, guys. It's not a, it's not a funny sight at all. So they, they've got it extinguished now. That must be a, quite an accomplishment. So, yeah, like I said, start around 8 p.m. with the fire chief is uh, Brian uh, Kakula or something like that. And again, he said the transformer uh, failure sparked multiple explosions, which resulted in one large fire and several smaller fires throughout the station. So there you go, guys. So this is no joke. This is at Brunot Island. Kind of makes you, you know, throw that R and you know, move that R over and be burnout almost. Put a U in. Kind of strange, right? Brunot Island. The, yeah, the power station is a 315 megawatt uh, for all of them. It's up three different... Uh, uh generators there or oil field generators you can see this station here and it's got this railroad that crosses the island too a railroad bridge so yeah let's hope it didn't do the damage to that that would mess up our inf transportation infrastructure but i don't think it did <clears throat> all right so here we are guys this is some of the stuff i've been telling you about from off-grid news the nine substation problem that would wipe out our power grid for 18 months See, so, well, I'm telling you, this comes from the uh, uh, 2014 report. I've told you about, as about this on this channel ever since I started this channel almost. From the uh, Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. I have cited this many, many times for years on this channel. So I thought it's time to show you an article. This is another article on the same thing. This goes back, you can see this article was written 13 March 2014. This is an old article. Uh, Fed six new rules to protect against physical attacks. You know what? Ain't, we're seeing physical attacks and nothing's been done. Nothing has been done, my friends. And here, of course, is a, a, an article on the EMP, Congressional EMP Task Force, which said that 90% of the population would cease to exist within a year. And what the other report said is going to take 18 months to fix it. But within a year, you'd already lose nine out of 10 people. This is the kind of stuff I've gone in great detail in other reports and many, many, many videos showing you why, what's so hard about those large transformers and why it's going to take so long to replace them and why this is actually an optimistic number. This number was not accounting for what would happen if the nuclear power plant spent fuel rod pools. Oh well, yeah, the reactors can be pretty safe if they shut down properly, but those spent fuel rod pools over time can give you a huge problem. I've recovered that in other reports. No point in beating that dog now. Uh, but if you want to see my other videos on power grid stuff, just look through my videos. I got tons of them. They're also a lot of times posted in the pin notes that I put below a lot of my videos. You can find a lot of resources there to figure out what is going down. But this is no joke. Uh, I happen to have known very well Dr. Peter Pry, who was one of the people that participated in that report. And he says, no, they didn't take the, the power plants in, into consideration, nor did they take into consideration when I brought up to that very few farmers actually grow enough food for them to eat personally. It's market garden farms. And I've done a video just going through all the farms, looking at scads of farms and finding uh, very few having gardens, both in rural Georgia, South Georgia, and up here. And I've backed that up by Google Earth searches. So that's not a joke, guys. This is no joke. So this talks, uh, I believe this quotes, yes, Dr. Peter Vincent Pry. There he is. I've got many videos where I interviewed him on this channel. God rest his soul. Great man, a great patron. He's passed away. So enough said, I'm going to stop the share. The bottom line is this could have been a dry run for something. And even if it wasn't, it might have been a natural event. This is an object lesson of what can fail and how it can fail. And you bet they're sleeper cells in this country. They're watching this with great intent. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And how many sleeper cells are there? How many countries have sleeper cells here? Are there any disaffected domestic organizations that might want to do something? Uh, I don't know, guys. Uh, you know, we've had a bunch of just 
hooligans who decided to take some pot shots for various and sundry reasons at some of these. And then it looks like there's been some that have been attacked by dry run operations by professional people that can do that kind of thing, unfortunately. So my friends, we are at risk. I tell you that if we get into a war with just about anybody, it ain't going to be the pretty thing that we, we've, well, we suffered, you know, some itty bitty country. It's not going to be the same kind of thing that we've seen in the past. Oh yeah, itty bitty country. Iran's got a huge military and they tell us they got sleep results here. So guys, be aware. Keep your eyes wide on the head on the swivel. Prepare. Don't be scared. Be prepared. Get ready. Get your food. Stock it up. Uh, go to the big box stores. Oh, yeah, the rice is going up in prices. I've been telling you this stuff for years to get stuff stocked up. And now the price is going, it's going to be harder. I would say go to prepwithgregs.com right now and get that special while you can. Because uh, uh, I think they're going to be going up. Because why? The, the, the base stuff that goes in these is going up. And for that reason, I expect great prices increases and that kind of stuff. So definitely check with prepwithgreg.com too. Because there's good specials there that you can hit, take advantage of for the long-term food storage. Yeah, you can get the, uh, a lot of other channels are now starting to promote the camping supply food. It might taste better in the short run, but it's not going to last 25 years, <laughs> which is what you might need when it gets tough. But it's, it's harder to bury that stuff. So my friends, check it out and uh, just... Be ready. Do everything you can. Money, grow a garden. Grow a garden. I got videos below showing you how to do that. I got videos below showing you how to eat free from the weeds and the trees. And I don't know if you guys are watching that stuff. And you also need to watch my nuclear survival videos because uh, you might need all that data. And uh, nobody's done better videos on that than me because I go into great detail on the, what the nature of the radiation is, what its threat is, and how to protect yourself from it. Anyway, my friends, thank you for watching. Like I said, eyes wide open. Head on a swivel, Greg out.